Hello, my name is Renee Leith Manos. Welcome to this podcast, Where To From Here, featuring conversations about luxury travel and how it's changing in every pocket of the globe. This really is one of Milan's historic hotels. It first opened its doors in 1927. The interiors really blend Art Deco features. There are crystal chandeliers, um, there's wooded furniture, the flowers are refreshed every, every couple of days. And this is a hotel that attracts a lot of celebrities. Um, there's just too many names to mention, but whether it's politicians, Hollywood stars, you know, royalty, Queen Elizabeth stayed there. I think she last stayed there in 2000, but she, yeah, she was a fan. You know, a hotel that has this much history is just a joy to stay in. You can always feel the energy of the history of the hotel and of the guests. It's also one of the locations in Milan that, you know, big companies can hire for really fantastic parties. So it's not uncommon to have a party there during Fashion Week, for example, which falls in September and February in Milan, I believe. Um, you know, there might be 500 people from the fashion industry there or, you know, um, from even a big company or so, you know, you see a lot of glamorous people there. There's a lot of positive energy. And one thing I really loved about this hotel with the staff, the staff are clearly passionate about Italy. They're passionate about Milan and they really want guests to see it and experience everything that's on offer. So the concierge had their own little section and, you know, when I was there, most of the time there were two or three concierges available in this Dorchester collection property at any one time. And they'll find anything from booking you a table to finding the best flowers on site to just, you know, telling you where to go for a cup of coffee if you just want a break from the hotel if you're on a long stay. Um, and I find that level of service just fantastic. And, you know, there are hotels around the world now that don't value that so much. So I like going to a hotel like this with that old world feel. Um, there's plenty of elevators, so you're never delayed or anything along those lines. And I really enjoyed sitting, because I was there in summer, in the lawns outside. There's there's chairs on the lawns. And I met quite a few, you know, hotel guests there, had a bit of a chat. And if you're a smoker, they've even thought about that. I mean, it is Italy, it is Europe after all. And there's a sort of area just in the driveway where you can go and there's some chairs there and just sit and have a cigarette and be far away from everyone but you're still on the property and still very safe and I noticed too there's lots of security around um, so you feel yeah you feel really safe and you just feel at home in this beautiful property which I can't wait to go to again but I'd really like to go in winter next time to see how it changes. This hotel is part of the Dorchester collection and it really is a landmark hotel in Milan. Now, I didn't know a lot about Milan before I went there, but I certainly do now. And I know that it's really important to stay in a hotel that really happy in that's as gorgeous as possible because Milan is a full on city. The shopping is out of this world. It, it is um, hosting the first Dolce and Gabbana homeware store, for example, where I spent basically one day, um, but it has the best fashion, the best food and some fantastic art. So subsequently you find yourself walking a lot. So you wanna have a hotel that's not too far from the city. And for me, I was walking from the heart of the city to the Principe de Savoia every day without a problem. And you also want a hotel that's got somewhere that you can actually chill out. And this hotel has some beautiful lawns outside. It has a balcony um, at the very top where you can sit and sunbake in summer and just have a coffee in the morning. It has a, a out of this world award-winning spa. It has a fantastic gym. And the rooms I just love, they're very traditional, they're very elegant, they're very luxurious. And downstairs, there's also a restaurant. But be, as you walk into the restaurant, there's a gorgeous sort of coffee type area where you can have snacks any time of the day, a cup of coffee. Of course, there's the gorgeous restaurant. And then outside, there's an outdoor area where you can sit and have a coffee again or a glass of water or just read a book at any time of the day or night. But as far as Milan goes, it has given birth to so many amazing designers and artists in history including Achelio Gastialoni and Gio Ponti. 
Now, these Milanese born talents were major names in the world of interior design, and their works can be spotted all around the city. And you can find, you know, online lots of tours to see some of these works, but there's just so, so much to see, so many incredible restaurants, bars, and shops. There are about 300 rooms at the hotel and there are many different designs. There's a penthouse that I think is 500 square metres big. Is that possible? I mean, that is huge. But there are suites where you can have like a deck leading outside. There are suites with a separate uh, bedroom and lounge room. And a lot of them have really long corridors. They've also been modernised with beautiful mirrors and the bathrooms have a lot of marble, which is gorgeous. And the design style was inspired by the Italian or the Milanese La Scala Opera House. The fabrics and colours are very rich. So there's quite a lot of gold, mauve. Um, yeah, and just it just got a, almost a regal and royal feel about the colours. And they've actually installed really heavy insulation. So despite the fact that this hotel can get busy, you know, with traffic outside and things, and certainly with lots of, you know, guests inside, you can't hear a thing. It's really, really quiet. And I sort of really felt like I was staying in someone's home. It was that quiet. And the service was also that intimate that I felt, you know, I really almost didn't feel like I was in a hotel, which is always a great feeling. The food and beverage outlets are excellent. There's a really lovely bar, which has like a crystal sort of backdrop that lots of people talk about and write about when they stay in a hotel. The restaurant Acanto features tons of local Italian favourites, depending what's in season. And that's something I really love about Milan is they're regularly changing the menus, even daily, weekly, if necessary, depending on what produce is around. There's a gorgeous lounge area where you can sit and have a snack at any time during the day, which you really tend to do because you come in from shopping or you know, seeing the art galleries or just simply walking around and you're quite tired. So a cool drink or a coffee to sort of pick yourself up is really what you feel like doing. Breakfast is also served in our Canto restaurant and it's a huge buffet lots of Italian treats, incredible meats, and the best Parmigiano on any breakfast buffet I've seen anywhere. There's like these huge chunks, which were just crazy. They'll make fresh juices for you. Um, the staff are just gorgeous. You know, I can be quite fussy when it comes to breakfast. They were squeezing me fresh lemon. They were making, you know, whatever we wanted, sort of, you know, um, um, yolk-free, you know, eggs, the egg white omelets and all this kind of thing. So look, it's, a, you know, the, the food and beverage is excellent. What I really like is they have a great room service menu and a great um, selection of wines and Proseccos and champagnes that you can order to the room. Because when you're in a beautiful room, you know, sometimes I just, you know, after a big day or particularly, you know, at night after I've seen a concert or something, I really don't want to eat at a restaurant. I just want to chill in the room. This is a hotel we can do that in absolute style. The hotel's award-winning spa is on the 10th floor and is just a wonderful place to just escape the pace of, you know, a holiday in Milan. I had a massage therapist who was out of this world. I actually asked him if he was a physio. He was so good at just finding the spots in my back and my legs that were sore, um, which was just wonderful. The gym is excellent. It's got, you know, excellent equipment, floor to ceiling windows, which means there's lots of light, which is always good if you exercise in the morning like I do, because it helps wake you up. And there's even an outdoor terrace just in front of the equipment where you can go and have a coffee after your workout, which I saw quite a few people doing. The swimming pool's on the same level. That's another big highlight. It's heated and it's just really picturesque and beautiful. And again, just a wonderful place to just chill at any time of the day to really, really have a break. But um, yeah, it's really nice to see a hotel where the facilities are so good. And a little bird told me that I believe they're going to be building another floor on top of that spa at some stage. I think they're going to be doing it later this year. And there's going to be possibly a restaurant up there as well. So we're going to see even more from this incredible hotel. Don't forget to subscribe here and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for regular travel updates. You can also hear our episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you.